welcome back. In the last class, we just reviewed the, the concept of uh, filters, elimination filters and interference filters and we also looked at the definition of optical path length and so on. And before we uh, started the optical microscope topic and we also extensively looked at the different kinds of lens defects. So, I just started introducing you the equipment, the light optical microscope. I would like to continue to do that. So, let us look at what I just showed in the, the last class. The, the first one I introduced is the metallurgical microscope, which is an inverted type. And I just, I just want you to have a feel of how this equipment looked like. Then we will slowly get into the details of the uh, uh, parts details as well as the operation details as we go along. So, I think we have just seen that. Let me speed up this. I also told that this is an attached with an uh, CCD camera also with some polarizers and analyzers and so on. These attachments we will take it up as and when we deal with the variation of the microscope. So, so what you are now seeing is an illumination stage where the sample is kept and this is a, a simple vertical type metallurgical microscope which I introduced in this the last class. So, this is uh, just to have a look at it again. This is a specimen stage, these are all different objectives and this is your ocular and the another one is which is attached with the image analysis system that also I just introduced. Just to recap, you can see that uh, objective lens again specimen stage. So, these objectives will have 3 or 4 depending upon the microscope ranging from 5 x to 50 x to 100 x. And you can see that uh, all the objectives are marked with their specification of their uh, magnification, refractive index details. And depending upon our interest, we can choose any one of these objectives to view the microstructure. So, this is a, again a, a leveling press to keep the specimen flat on the microscope. And this is what uh, we have seen already. A metallic polished specimen is being pressed with the plasticizer to make it evenly placed so that your reflection can be from the a flat surface. Now, this is the this is how the specimen is placed under the objective and then you choose the lowest one to examine the micro the microstructure details through the eyepiece. You can directly view through the eyepiece as well as you can look at the monitor, computer monitor because it is being interfaced with the CCD camera. So, either you can look through the ocular directly or uh, you can look at the computer monitor because it is attached with the CCD camera. Now, this microscope is the, this is where I just left in the last class. So, this is a optical transmission microscope, which has got uh, two illuminating system. One is uh, halogen lamp, this one and this is mercury vapor lamp. So, it is being shown closely for your clarity, halogen lamp, mercury vapor lamp. These two are just used 
for a specific application. I will just mention whenever it is applicable. So, have a look at it, how this uh, the, the structure, uh, the, the architecture is very different from the simple vertical microscope. What you are now seeing is a, a polarizer which is being engaged and then in a normal bright field illumination you disengage this so that this is kept for uh, the light to pass through. And what you are now seeing is below the a set of uh, a condenser and filters and apertures belong to different modes of operation. You can see that it is being numbered 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. So, depending upon the operation mode, you will turn this condenser and aperture to a particular slot which is given which is given as a white dot here, so that uh, you will be able to perform that particular operation. So, in this uh, condense set of condenser apertures, the 1 and 2 is for a phase contrast mode and 3 is for DIC mode that is um, differential interference contrast mode I will we will see in much more detail when we deal with that particular uh, variant of the microscopic technique and 4 and 5 apertures are meant for bright field illumination. So, you have this uh, condenser upper set of apertures here and then uh, appropriate uh, apertures are being chosen depending upon the mode of operation. So, this is for your uh, clarity much more closer view of this uh, condenser apertures being rotated 1, 2 for phase contrast mode. So, 3 DIC mode. I will let you know the details of what kind of apertures and uh, uh, condenser details uh, as and when I just talk about the theory of this mode of operation. I just int want to introduce the, the kind of hardware you should know. You should not think that uh, every microscope variant will have a different, different uh, microscope as a whole. It is just that uh, aperture and then condenser setup and filters which makes the, the variance of the microscopy. So, now again this is a polarizer being engaged and disengaged and this is the specimen stage. Remember this is a transmission optical microscope. So, you have the uh, transparent uh, window where you can keep your uh, very thin transparent sample on this uh, glass slide and then you can start viewing it. So, this is the specimen stage which can be adjusted in x and y movement for with this knob. You can clearly see that x and y movement. So, you, you should uh, have a, an idea this is done just to give you a feel of as if you are actually in the laboratory to operate this uh, microscope. I will also do uh, give you uh, the actual experiment so that uh, you will have a complete understanding of operation of this uh, equipment. So, again this is the whole specimen stage is being adjusted, you can see that. This is an another axis movement.
Now you see that uh, your all your objectives are kept in the vertical position compared to the a normal uh, vertical type metallurgical microscope. It is put in inverted positions, but you can see that uh, you have about 6 slots. One, these 2 slots are kept empty, but other 4 slots are filled with different kinds of objective aperture. You can also see that the details of the uh, objectives are written in these letters where the, the magnification details that is 4x and then this, this is some kind of refractive index details and then typically this has got 4x and then 10x and 20x and this is 40x or 50x. So, depending upon the kind of microscopes you can have whether it is a 4 objectives or 5 and it is up to 6. So, this has got about possibility of keeping 6 objectives, but you have right now we have it is only 4 objectives. So, if you have up to 50 and 100 x, uh, eventually you will have the magnification up to 1000 x because your eyepiece will have 10, 10 x magnification. What is that now you are seeing is uh, this is a, a part called analyzer. Uh, the, the operator is just inserting the analyzer. This analyzer is being used when we operate that microscope in a differential interference contrast mode, DIC mode. And you can do this uh, a constructive and destructive interference preference using this knob. Turning this knob, you can make the preference of constructive and destructive interference. We will see in appropriate time how it is useful to um, use this uh, parts. So, now we will see a another set of condenser aperture just below this uh, shutter. This shutter is meant for operating this the bottom illumination which is mercury lamp most in this microscope it is being used only for fluorescence mode when you want to operate perform a fluorescence microscopy then this is kept on this is an on position mercury lamp will be on and when you put it back then it is in a halogen lamp mode so here again uh, you have a another set of condenser uh, apertures uh, similar to what we have seen in the top of uh, or above these objective ap apertures 1 and 2 for phase contrast and uh, 3 for DIC and 4 and 5 for uh, bright field illuminations. So, you should keep both the condenser and aperture and filters uh, above and below the objectives on the same position to perform a particular mode of operation. For example, if, if it is if you are going to operate a bright field illumination, either you choose a, a condenser window here 4 or 5. Similarly, you have to rotate this on the top of or above the objective condenser lens also 4 or 5, then only your uh, mode of operation will be correct. It is just for your clarity this rotation is being shown once again. So, the next detail uh, we would like to see is the focusing knob. Uh, this is uh, uh, the bigger one is uh, coarse focus and uh, the smaller one is the fine focus. Uh, it will basically move the stage towards the objective uh, or either way. Uh, you will start focusing the specimen and this is a coarser. This is coarser, this is fine. The smaller one is fine. And the next 
detail is the the eyepiece illumination I mean magnification either you have 1 x if you pull this knob out then it is 1 x and if you push it inside sorry if you pull it it is 1.6 x if we push it inside it is 1 x for a eyepiece. So, this facility is possible and this is your uh, brightness control, this is uh, more intensity to the lower intensity. So, this is an ocular piece which has got about uh, which has got some variable I mean 10 x to 15 x. So, now you have some idea about a uh, parts of uh, uh, optical transmission microscope uh, and as well, as well as the simple vertical or inverted microscopes what are the kind of parts you have a illumination system, you have a specimen stage, you have objective, you have an eyepiece and so on and if it is uh, integrated with the uh, a computer or a CCD camera then you will have those also will be part of the optical microscope. So, now I would like to show uh, a bright field illumination in this optical microscope in actual experiments. Before I do that I would like to do some board work in, in a bright field illumination the primary uh, thing is the reflectivity. Reflectivity is the key factor in a bright field illumination. So, for the when you say reflectivity what happens uh, when the light falls on the specimen then the light which is being reflected which are getting entering into the objective then that place will appear bright. So, the more the reflectivity from the object the more the the image quality and so on. So, for that the, the objective also should be completely illuminated. So, for that we will see some of the uh, some of the basics of uh, uh, condensers and uh, illuminators especially for an opaque uh, specimens like a metallurgical system or material system. Bright field illumination reflectivity is a key factor. So, this is uh, a key point and before uh, we, we will just uh, exploit this uh, concept we will look at the uh, condensers and uh, illuminators we will talk about illuminators. So, you, you see up to 25 times of magnifications you do not require a, a condenser to illuminate an objective, but beyond that uh, otherwise the objective which is having higher magnification you need a condenser. So, let us write no condenser is necessary up to the magnification of 25 x. This is another point. So, the overall
resolving for is depending on numerical apertures of both objective and illuminating systems. So, we know that already just to, to give a, a connect to the, the concept of uh, reflection, uh, illumination of objective is also uh, equally important concept. So, for that we are uh, looking at the some of the basics and so we can write if, if the numerical aperture of the objective exceeds that of illuminating system, then the resolving power we can write is given by R equals 0.5 times lambda divided by objective numerical aperture plus condenser numerical aperture. So, this clearly tells that thus if your microscope is to give its optimum performance numerical aperture of the condenser must equal that of objective. So, let me read it again. We are talking about uh, illuminating the objective at higher magnification that is more than 25 x. The overall resolving power is depending on the numerical apertures of both objective and illuminating system. If the numerical aperture of objective exceeds that of illuminating system, then the resolving power R is given by 0.5 times lambda divided by objective of numerical aperture and then condenser numerical aperture. If a microscope is to give its optimum performance, you can put it in the coat, the numerical aperture of the condenser must equal to the duff objective. So, that takes care of the illumination of the objective. Then what we talk about this reflectivity also will be optimum. 
So, in normal microscope, if you talk about the, the illuminating system, and if you there are two things, we will we will confine our uh, discussion only to the uh, metallurgical microscope. Primarily, we will see what are the other variations in the other variants. First, let us take uh, illumination of opaque specimens. See, if you look at the working distance of any metallurgical microscope which we are going to see, I will show you, it is very, very small. So, illuminating the specimen between the objective and the spec specimen surface is rarely possible. So, oblique illumination can be employed. So, what happens if you employ an oblique in illumination? Suppose if you have the surface like this, suppose we are now illuminating like this, so this will go and this will this will go and suppose you have the objective here. So, if it is an oblique illumination on a, a surface like this, if it is, it is not on an even surface, the, the reflected rays uh, not primary reflected rays which will not enter the objective, but only the, the reflection which is from the step or a, an uneven surface only will get into the objective, only those features will appear bright in the feature. So, see the, the, the best is the normal, the illumination through the normal direction. We will see just uh, what are the illuminations which are primarily employed in the metallurgical microscope and then we will proceed to the bright field illumination. Let me draw the schematic. Suppose this is the This is a light ray which is coming from the source. So, normally it is passes through a glass slip. And then they are all reflected. Then you have the objective. and then you have the specimen surface, this is object, let us be A, object, this is objective lens and then it goes and then it reflected back and it goes to eyepiece. This is uh, an inclined slip illumin illuminator, inclined slip illuminator for a, in a normal conventional 
metallurgical microscope. The other type of illumination is this. Here the glass slip is kept at 45 degree and you have this uh, glass slip and then this comes down. and you have the objective and you have the object. this goes to I eyepiece. And this is called Smith Illuminator. And the third and final one is a simple one. The light source comes and then it enters a, a prism and then directly goes to the objective and the sample. So you have these uh, three, three kind of uh, illumination possible in the conventional metallurgical microscope. Uh, this is ca called I mean the inclined glass slip illumination and you see that uh, with this only 20 percent of the light is being used for the image formation. And this setup is just because if you use a polarized light and in this case if you use a polarized light the plane of polarization get rotated by this glass slip which is overcome by this design that is for a Smith illuminator. The, the more intense illumination is possible by introducing a prism in the optical tube uh, but then it also obstructs the, uh, the, the ray path in the tube. But these are the primary uh, illumination paths are being considered for the conventional metallurgical microscope. So now we will look at uh, some of the example of uh, bright field illumination. <coughs> I will take you to the microscopy lab again and then we will see. So what you are now seeing is uh, I am going to just show you the bright field um, illumination and the identifying the microstructure. There are three samples, one is a steel specimen, another is a cast iron, another is a aluminum specimen. We will see how this uh, bright field illumination gives 
uh, what kind of information. We will use again the, the vertical type microscope and uh, I will take up this uh, sample preparation techniques in a separate class and this is just I am introducing uh, uh, a specific uh, mode of operation. So, we are talking about the bright field illumination now. So, you, you, you should have uh, some idea about how this bright field looking like. So, we will keep this uh, so now the sample is being kept the polished sample being kept on an inverted microscope and what what you now see is uh, this is an another I mean this is a cast sample. and you can even use this clip to be stationed the specimen and then you use the appropriate objective lens uh, to start with it will be at the lowest probably the 5 x objective you use and you can rotate the torrent and uh, what you now see is uh, selecting the appropriate objective and then and viewing it on the specimen and this is for uh, aluminum sample. So, all these three microstructures we are going to look at it that is why it is uh, just shown how the samples are being kept and then just uh, it is just showing the operational mo mode how you look at it. Since it is a reflection microscope and I say as I said it is an opaque samples. So, we will see how the bright field microstructure appear. So, you see the microstructure is grabbed by the CCD camera and now you are seeing it in the monitor. This is the a cast iron microstructure where you see uh, the people who have some materials background will understand what I am saying otherwise uh, the people who do not have the material you do not have to worry what it is. All that uh, you have to appreciate is you are able to see this microstructure because of the, the reflection that the region which is appearing very bright are getting the lights are getting into the objective, the one which is appearing dark they are escaping the objective that is something you can see. So, the here the uh, for the people who understand the materials the information is this is uh, white cast iron and then you have uh, so now you see that uh, you are increasing the magnification, you are able to see the, the, the third phase details. So, you have basically a two phase, in this case it is a ferrite and cementite, the white is cementite and the black is perlite, sorry, perlite and cementite, sorry. And then you increase the magnification to 500 x, so you start seeing much more detail. Uh, of the specimen. See, you see that uh, the, as the magnification increases, you are, uh, you can see that the depth of focus is also having some issue because the specimen flatness is questioned here, and you can see that at the end of the the corner, you are you are not able to focus as good as in the in the center region of the specimen. So, now you go to the 500 x or even more 1000 x you will see that uh, much more detail.
I think it is uh, it is getting blurred beyond this we will we will look at the next uh, okay this is better 1000 x and this is for the the medium carbon steel specimen is the lowest magnification or 100 x you see that uh, ferrite and white is ferrite and black is perlite. As I mentioned the people do not uh, have the background and materials you do not have to worry it is just that the, the face which is appearing bright that means the reflectivity of that face is very high you can say that that means the rays which is coming coming from this white surface are entering into the objective the one which is appearing dark escape the objective that is all you have to remem uh, remember and then appreciate. For any specimen which is having this kind of a surface uh, undulation you will have this kind of a contrast. Again this is a 200 x magnification and uh, you see the details of the microstructure is getting better and better. So, now you go to 500 x you see the much more detail inside the, the, the white region all close boundaries are being revealed so clearly. And this is a 1000 x magnification you can even see that uh, you are able to resolve this the black portion which is uh, a perlite and you are able to see much more details of the sample. So, you just see ok this is a better 1000 x you can see much more clearly the details of the black face and uh, so we will now move on to the next sample. This is the aluminum sample is a an as cast structure you, you are able to see that uh, it is a cast structure. Uh, the people who do not have this background for this materials I, I would say them it is it is a solidified form of aluminum microstructure you see that we call it these things are called in metallurgical terms are dendrites and then you can see that uh, the details much more details of this specimen at as you go from a lower magnification to higher magnification much more clear details are visible. You can see that inside this the other black face you will be able to see much more details of the microstructural information. So, with that uh, uh, I would like to move on to the next technique what we have now seen is a bright field illumination in a conventional metallurgical microscope the kind of information you get what I have just demonstrated and in the next class I will start with the, the first another variant of uh, optical microscope and then I will also similarly take you to this uh, microscopy and then show the actual demonstration of the different contrast which you obtain from the microscope. Thank you.